Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for September 26, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. Man, after a rough Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, we finally had a nice Thursday come in our favor. Um, not so much from the PL, although the PL was nice, but it was really nice to start to get back into that 100% column, um, what we're used to. Uh, so I think helping uh, th doing that midweek volatility box update that we did yesterday did help at least a little bit. I'm going to pretend it did um, since we were able to come out victorious, at least in the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, and the, the bond futures. Our trade in the crude oil was basically a break even, so I've counted that as a win just for the percentage since we didn't lose. Um, but the, the PL was a plus zero there. Um, but really, all in all, it was nice to get back into the winning column, something we're used to, uh, getting back to it with the probabilities that we're used to seeing. Uh, in the case of the NASDAQ and the Dow, we also got fairly close to our T2 before uh, we started to reverse. And so our second contracts unfortunately stopped at a break even. Uh, but your open PL was much higher at one point in time, which um, while you can't realize any of that, it's still nice to see that the models are still working. The volatilities become contained once again. Um, and we're going back to playing the probabilities and uh, following the trade plan that we put in place for us. Once again, just a second reminder for everyone, and you'll uh, only get, I think, one or two more of these reminders from me um, before the event actually starts. Um, but the Mr. Trade, uh, Mr. Top Step Trade, Traders Symposium is coming up next week. Um, it's really just a chance to hear from uh, a bunch of really, really uh, intelligent traders who uh, have some really awesome tools. Um, so we'll be presenting ourselves uh, with the volatility box. And for those of you who say don't want to sign up for this, I believe it's 10 bucks. Um, which is a pretty good value, all things considered, since you get to hear from folks like David, uh, Jeff Hirsch, who's the guy behind Stock Traders Almanac, uh, Ophir, who I think is just an incredibly smart trader, um, and a bunch of other folks who are fairly talented and have been doing this for a very long time. Um, you could listen to all of them, um, but I think a few of you asked us if we could email you just our recording, uh, and that's something that I'm happy to do as well. If you didn't want to pay the 10 bucks, uh, I can send you our presentation since that's something that I can control. Uh, all right, so we'll put these out for two more days. Uh, again, no uh, no commission, nothing like that. Uh, so this is just uh, a chance for you if you care to listen to some of these folks and understand how they trade and the sort of experience and just different perspectives on the market because everyone here uh, has been making money doing this for a pretty long time. Uh, and so here's just a chance to get all that education in one centralized place uh, from a group of people that you can trust for a price that's fairly reasonable, all things considered. Ten bucks in the trading world is... Um, probably some of your commissions on a on a day. All right. Anyways, let's dive into charts and uh, take a look at what happened today. Okay, so we'll start with the S&P, and uh, we sent out a note early in the morning, which I'll take a look at. Um, but if we take uh, if we perform our test that we always perform, which is uh, we draw our entry line and we check to see whether or not we breached either side's aggressive volatility box entry lines, we see that we had towards the end of the hour. Now at this point, we're waiting for a follow through in the opposite direction. Uh, to see if we would get that. And so we sent out this note to all of our traders uh, in which we very clearly said that in the ES, if we touch 2983.5 before 2966, then we would use the aggressive volatility box. Um, but if we ended up touching 2966 first, then that would be our sign to use the conservative. And we performed the same exact thing with the NASDAQ as well, where we had a 7794.50 target. Um, if we take a look at those charts, uh, you'll see that something very similar happened. Uh, and so we wanted to see the 7794.50 uh, that then signaled to us that, hey, we could continue to use the aggressive volatility box. What's interesting is the NASDAQ did give us the target that we were looking for. And so it gave us the permission to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. Um, but the S&P did not. We ended up hitting our stop before we made the move to the price that we had said. And so that was our sign in the S&P to switch on over to the conservative volatility box. And so if you do that, um, then for the rest of the day, we had no entry set up in the S&P 500. However, now we come back to the NASDAQ, and that's where we did have permission, using probabilities and edges uh, and our observations, to start to figure out um, that we could use the aggressive volatility box and to scope out entries there. Our first entry came as price slammed into our aggressive volatility box entry lines, and you had plenty of opportunity to get in. Uh, our stop was 15 points wide outside of the volatility box, uh, and our first target was the 15 points, which was hit 
um, in this downfall. And our second target was at the target line, which we barely missed before price started to reverse. Again, this looks easy in hindsight that you barely missed it and maybe you could have trailed a stop. Um, but it's one of those things that's clear looking back. But uh, in the moment, uh, we follow our trade plan and rules. However, Ron, if you're listening, um, he suggested a pretty interesting concept, which is the idea of um, a shifting risk and reward. So essentially, as now we've hit our T1 and maybe you're moving towards, say, T2, um, you need to you could measure what you're risking. So in terms of we would move our stop to break even compared to what the uh, possible potential reward is. And you might look at adjusting your stops along the way, maybe trailing something if, if you care to do so. That's now dependent on each trading style. And you can start to tweak this if if things like this really start to bug you, you know, where um, you get super close. Uh, but then it picks off for us. It's just one of those things where you can set it, leave it, forget it. Uh, and it's it's easy to do. Uh, but if we start to see this happen more often than not, then Ron's concept is is, is an interesting one of the idea of shifting risk rewards as we start to make the move in our favor. OK, let's now move on to uh, the Dow chart. So once again, on the Dow, we didn't come close to breaching either side's aggressive volatility box entry lines. And so there, it was a very clear sign for us to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. Uh, and here, we started to once again look for entries. Our entry came uh, right when we slammed into the volatility box entry lines. Our stop was outside of the volatility box, where we gave it 45 points of room. Our first target was the 45, which was hit. And our second target, once again, was not hit. And once again, Q Ron's point, um, this is where if you'd like to start to protect, if you wanted to trail stops, that's based on your personal trading style again, right? At this point, you're playing with house money. Uh, and if you want to start to recognize some more profits, go for it. Okay, so now let's move ahead to the Russell futures. And the Russell is the one that gave us both our T1 and our T2. So we draw our aggressive volatility box line and we check to see whether or not we breached either side's volatility box entry lines. We see that we didn't, and that was our sign to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. Our entry came as we had an entry in uh, the other indices as well. Uh, our stop was outside of the volatility box where we gave it three points of room in the Russell. We ended up hitting our first target fairly quickly, and the Russell did go on to hit our T2, uh, which was 6.2 points wide. And so in the Russell, we did get our T1 and our T2. Now here, for example, let's say that you started to trail your stop, right? Just to play devil's advocate to that point, or at least start to understand times where that might not work. You may trail the stop by using the previous high of the candle in this case and trailing it down. So your stop might be adjusted after we hit our targets, I believe, uh, I think it was in this candle, um, you might have adjusted your stop to right here, right? And so your stop might be here while you're trying to play for the volatility box uh, target two line. And in that next candle, you would have been stopped out here trying to adjust it if that's how you trailed your stop. Now you might, uh, we trail our stops essentially in the form of moving it from here to break even. Um, and so for us, that helped us save, uh, or that spared us from getting stopped out here. Um, but that, that's just really one of your preferences, right? How, how much room do you want to give it as you trail it? You could also give it um, a larger room and actually trail it down as we continue to make lower lows before we say ended up hitting this target. Uh, again, just different ways that you may want to play the second target if that's something you care to do. Okay, and now moving on to the bonds. And so we'll start by drawing our uh, timeline check and we check to see whether or not we breached either side's volatility box entry lines. We see here that we very clearly had and we were looking for an eight point move in the opposite direction or eight ticks, right? And the way we get to that is by taking just the line tool and we measure and we're looking for something outside of the volatility box. So eight to nine ticks, eight is usually uh, one that, you know, like if seven is where the edge of the volatility box is, giving it one or more two ticks of rooms helps, right? And here we see that we hit our eight point target right away and so that was our sign to continue to use the aggressive volatility box and let's just say just to play uh, devil's advocate you were waiting for nine um you still got that flush in this candle so either way you knew by this point that you should be uh, using the aggressive volatility box per our trade plan rules and now we're scoping out entries and our first entry comes as we have an opportunity to get short the bonds as pr uh, price heads up into the volatility box our stop is outside of the volatility box where you're given it eight ticks of room our first target is the eight ticks, which is hit in this candle. And our second target is at the target line, which is 10 ticks. And that gives us both a T1 and a T2. Now, technically, this triggers us into a second uh, order 
However, at this point, our orders are canceled since this is an edge of our entry. So our orders are canceled by the 55 candle. And this is free information to us, right? And so at this point, we're not in a trade. We've just taken off a, a T1 and a T2. And this is free information where we're looking to see if we can hit at least our T1 or if we had continued to dwindle down lower. And if we had, then that would have been our sign to switch on over to the conservative volatility box. And that's just free information. However, we did end up hitting our T1. And so that was our sign. Okay, cool. We still know that we have permission to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. And our second entry came uh, towards the end of the hour in um, the final hour of the market, actually in the middle, where we had an opportunity to get long the bonds uh, as price fell in. Our stop was outside of the volatility box. We gave it eight points of room. We didn't see that fall through right away. And so we ended up taking off uh, both of our contracts uh, at the four ticks, which we had plenty of opportunity to do um, before the market closed just to prevent uh, any overnight holding risk. And finally, we'll take a look at crude. And so uh, crude using our timeline feature, uh, we see that we had permission to continue to use the aggressive volatility box since we didn't breach either side. We didn't even get close. Uh, and we had an opportunity to get short into crude as we slammed right uh, into our volatility box entry lines. We had plenty of time to get in. Um, however, we didn't see any sort of follow through. And this is where um, into the close of the market, you had plenty of chances to just get off for a break even and call it a scratch. If for some reason you hadn't and you decided to uh, continue to take the risk to hold it into um, the afternoon session, uh, then what we see right now is we are getting the type of follow through that would have helped you achieve. Uh, I believe a T1 is approaching fairly soon here. T1 is actually closer to here where you'd have 30 cents. Uh, but we see that price is starting to move down in that direction if you had continued to hold it. For us, we just took it off a break even. And so that was a zero dollar net gain and loss for us. All right, so once again, to conclude today, we had a total of six trades. Out of those six, five of those six were winners in terms of actual cash. One was a break even. Uh, and so we didn't have any losing trades today. Uh, and our total PL for the day was a 1797.50 in the positive direction, which helps us at least make up the losses from yesterday and then some. Uh, and we're now starting to chip away at our earlier losses from this week. And we'll see what Friday brings around. It's nice to at least get a winning day under our belts. Uh, that does something at least going 100% in terms of our confidence in these models and just uh, what it does for your training in a psychological perspective. Uh, so celebrate that. Uh, I know a few of you emailed us telling us that you had some really nice winning trades today and it was nice after the week. So once again, that's awesome. Celebrate those profits. Uh, trade into uh, Friday and just be a little cautious knowing that it's Friday. Recognize what happened last Friday. Last Friday did take some of our profits away. Uh, and so we're just looking for any signs to be cautious, uh, but we're not scared, right? We're just looking for signs. We, we've been watching these charts enough and our goal is to start to just become observation machines uh, without emotion attached to it. And I think uh, at least judging from a lot of your emails and feedback today, uh, we're making strides in that direction, which is really awesome to see. Uh, and we look forward to an exciting day of trading tomorrow. All right. Take care, everyone, and happy trading tomorrow.